Hello ladies, how are you? I am, I've been wanting to do this video for so long and it's never the right moment or I don't have on makeup or I don't have on jewelry and here I am. Um, the kids are probably going to come in and out. I've tried to make this video a few times already so it's just going to be what it is. Okay, here's my mommy look. Anyway, so this is going to be about hostess coaching um, and I really, really want to do a training on this first because uh, I did not do so well at the beginning with hostess coaching and it really did affect everything. Um, I remember there was a point where I had 75 home shows, but I had also had 45 cancellations and that's a big number. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do to pretty much cut that number in half or, or not even have it. Um, well, that's not true. You're always going to have cancellations, but um, that was really high. And the reason it was high was because I wasn't home hostess coaching. I wasn't hostess coaching. I was not even... Um, involved in the invitation process none of it um so that's what that's what happened i put my whole entire business into someone else's hand and said hey do the party and i'll see you you know the night of the show and that wasn't happening i would call maybe a week before and everyone would you know say oh i forgot or i didn't invite anyone yet or i'm not doing it anymore or who's this i didn't remember you no that never happened but hey it very well could have um, because that's pretty much what I was doing. I was thinking that this was going to kind of run itself and well, that's not going to happen, right? You're, you're the face of the business. You're the boss. It's going to be succeed or fail with you. So home or, or your, your organization for this part of the business, because this is all the back office stuff. This is not like the home show part. This is not the booking activity and all that stuff. This is like behind the scenes. So I'm going to share with you my two and a half years of figuring out how to do this. Um, I think I finally um, got a great system going on. So I'm going to share it with you. Okay, so when I meet um, the, 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 the future hostess at a show, um, I will tell you I'm not hostess home coaching yet. Um, I've never done that. I haven't yet. It's probably going to be one of those things I'm going to regret in two years looking back. But um, I just, I haven't done it yet. So I can't, you know, tell you to do it when I'm not doing it myself. But I am going to, you know, remind you that everyone says it's like the best thing to do. Um, what I'm doing instead is I'm co hostess coaching them like at the show when I meet them. So when I meet them, I'm giving and we pick their date. I don't let them walk out without putting a date on my calendar. And it's very simple. It's like, oh, you're going to have a show? And then most of the time they'll be like, yeah, I'll get back to you. And you just kind of nonchalantly go into, oh, okay, that's fine. So what day were you thinking? And everyone's going to know Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. They're going to know which day they prefer. And she'll probably say, oh, no, it has to be a Saturday. Oh, okay. Were you thinking this month or the next month? And then she'll probably say, oh, not this month. And next month, I'm so busy. It'll have to be May. At that point, you've locked it down to a day of the week and a month that she's thinking and going to go check. But you don't want her to leave without a date in your calendar. So at that point I'll say, Ooh, let me check May. You wanted a Saturday in May. I actually only have one left and you show her cause it's the truth. And at that point she'll probably say, I think that's good. And put that in or, or, or at that point, all of a sudden she'll know her availability and she'll see your calendar and she'll be able to pick. Um, that's been probably the most important verbiage that I've learned and said every single time. You don't just say, so what date do you want? Because then they're just kind of freaked out. You always start, oh, so what, what day of the week did you like? Today's Sunday, do you like Sunday? Or today's Friday, did you like a Friday night show? And right away, they're going to know. They're going to at least know what day of the week they prefer. Um, and then it's just getting it down to a month and you know, there's only, you know, four days of, of, you know, four Fridays in a month. So she says May and a Friday, you pretty much can lock it down. Okay. So that's a tip to, to get it on your calendar. Now what's, once it's on your calendar and she's sitting there, she's checked out, she's picked her date. I actually pull out my hostess packet and I take out what's inside. I show her what's inside, which is super simple. It's the curiosity package that I give everybody because hostesses are typically the people that become your, your jewelers. So I want her to have everything. Um, I usually separate all that information into a little pretty zebra bag or leopard bag so that it's separate. Then I have the, the catalogs some order forms, just paper copies. Um, I usually do about four or five because that's how many people it will, it'll take to get about a hundred dollars in pre-orders. And then I have the one sheet of the tic-tac-toe hostess coaching, which has pretty much every little thing she needs to do. And I just briefly give an overview of it. I also show her what the front and back of that envelope has, because there's some valuable information on there too. So I do that all with her then. 
And then I have a home hostess um, checklist. So I pull this out and I put her name on it and then I start asking her questions. So is it a house or an apartment? Do you have a big table? Um, is there parking issues? Are there going to be kids involved or, or invited? Just so I know because if there's going to be a whole bunch of little girls, maybe I'll bring a whole bunch of like dollar store jewelry for them so that they won't touch my jewelry. So these are all things that I want her to think about and possibly answering me at this moment. I ask her, um, or I tell her, I'm going to um, send out invitations for you. I'm gonna make you a textable invite and I'm gonna um, mail out postcards. I tell her that I'm going to do it because I, when I used to ask, so do you want me to mail out postcards? They would say no. But now I say, I'm gonna mail out postcards, so I'm gonna need your addresses. Super easy, once you call them to ask them or you text them the invite, just tell them to text you back their address and start sending them to me as you get them. That usually makes it a lot easy. Um, and usually people don't have addresses, so you're kind of giving them a solution to their problem. Oh, I don't have them. Well, super easy. When you call them to invite them, tell them to text it to you, okay? So then I'm sending out um, a postcard. A lot of jewelers do a whole package with a mini catalog. Um, I used to do that. It got so complicated for me that I just then did nothing. And I have found that this is better than nothing. And of course, the package is better than this. So just find your comfort level. Um, but this is something I do. They're, they sell these on, on the service store. And it really literally has space just for the details and for the you know, person's address. Um, my thing is that this is something like in their hand. Like, oh, this is like a real party. Like, I'm expected there. I was invited. They, they went out of their way to send me this. Um, usually they put this in their fridge. And I've heard a lot of people say that it was great to see, you know, receive handwritten um, invitation. And they also have said that this reminded them. So plus, plus, plus. Um, the two last shows that I didn't do this for, people canceled left and right. Whereas the shows where I did do this for, there was like hardly any cancellations even within them. Okay. So I think that's important. Um, I also ask her right then and there um, if she's going to want to, that, I, or I offer her that I can do a Facebook show after her show to get all the people who maybe didn't show up or people who didn't, she didn't invite or out of towners. So I tell her I help her with that as well. Um, so that's what I do that night. That's, that's pretty much what I would do at her home, but I do it that night. So that's what I do. Now, the, as soon as I get home, probably that next day, I'm texting her with a cute little graphic saying, thank you for being a hostess. Um, I'm making sure that I friend her on Facebook. I'm making sure that she's in my Facebook group because I, I post a lot in there. So I want her seeing me every day. I don't want her to forget about me. Um, so I'm texting her. Thank you. I'm adding her to my contacts. I'm adding her to all my social media and my Facebook groups. Um, and then at one point, you know, that very next week, I'm sitting down with this box. This is just like a cute little box that used to have like perfumes in it from Bed Bath & Beyond. And I use it as my um, mailing box. So inside I have um, postcards and I have everything I need to sit down and hand write cards. So I have a whole bunch of cards. You know, I just grab one. You know, thank you so much for hosting. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to your show. Can you believe that your friend, you know, Susie got $400 in free jewelry? I can't wait to see how much you're going to get. I love writing that because then they're like, oh my God, I was at that show. That got her $400. That's amazing. So they're like more excited. So in here, um, I used to mail out two of these. I used to mail out one with a magnet. And it was just my thank you. And the magnet is something I ordered on Vista Print. I ordered like 500 of them for like 40 bucks two and a half years ago, and I still have some. So I write on a permanent marker, you know, the date your Premier Designs Jewelry Show is scheduled for, and I put the date and the time, and they can stick this on their fridge, and they're probably never going to take it off because I still have mine up there from when I hosted. It just stays on their fridge, and it's like a, a business card in their face all the time. Okay, so I thank them. I put the... I put that in there. Um, I do put the gift cards, those really cool plastic ones from Incentives. But if I forget or if I um, if I ran out, I just use this that's also sold on Incentives. And I just put, you know, it's just to show these things aren't like, you don't have to swipe them or anything. So it doesn't matter if you even printed it out yourself. Um, I have some of those that I printed out myself as well. I don't have any right now, but. So I put that in there too. And then I also put this little paper that's pretty much everything I already told her at the hostess coaching the night I met her. And it's in the hostess packet. But I send it again. And it basically tells her, you know, invite your friends and family personally. 
um, show around the catalog and collect pre-orders so you can earn the gift card. I give her my website link so she can see the um, catalog. I give her my Facebook link so she can join my group. And I tell her to keep in touch. And I also say this is my full-time job. So remember, you know, keep me in the loop if, if anything sh were to happen that you have to cancel. And I also tell her, remember, you're getting a girls' night. And I list all the hostess benefits. Um, I also mentioned that my average hostess earns about $400 in free jewelry. So make your wish list and my contact information again. So I send all of this just like that. I put the little paper, the magnet, the gift card, my thank you note handwritten, and I mail it to her. And I try to pick, you know, not white so that it just stands out. So I have blue and pink and green and vibrant um, envelopes and little cute cards. Um, so every time I do this, I don't have to like rummage around my house to find everything. Everything I need to get this accomplished is in here, including the stamps. Okay. I also have my package of um, postcards in here because usually, you know, I sit down to do all my handwriting stuff all at once. Um, you know, I was one of the first people to say, this is so old fashioned. We have internet, we have text, we have messenger, we have electronic everything. Why do I need to like sit here and do this? Do it. It makes a difference. Trust me on this one. I, I tried to fight it at first and I didn't do it for so long. And then once I started doing it, things happened. Okay. People, believe it or not, want to receive a handwritten note. They love it. And it just helps build the relationship. Okay. So definitely do it. Um, all right. So back to my checklist at this point on my checklist, um, I've texted them. I've added them to social media. I've written out their thank you card and magnet. I've designed their textable invite. I do that on our $10 a month website. I do that through there, the planner. Um, I write out their gift card and now it's time. That's all the stuff I need to do right away. So if the show is on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, by Monday, Tuesday of that next week, I'm working on all the right away stuff. Okay. Um, before the show, I want to text them their, their invite and I have that as a, you know, as a separate thing. So I'm probably going to do that that week as well. I always tell them whether your show is in two weeks or three months, you want to give people, you know, the save the date as soon as you have it. So if you have it, you know, if your show is not for a while, send it right away. People appreciate that. Um, so, okay, that's done. And then now, you know, between this time, I've already done all the, you know, I text them a thank you. I, I mail them that card. And I, like I said, I used to mail the card in two times. I used to mail just the magnet in one, you know, envelope the very next week. And then a week before their party, I used to send them the gift cards with like tips on, on how to get the gift card. Um, I do recommend that way because the gift cards, if I send it two months ahead of time, they're kind of going to like get lost in junk mail, but I'm really bad at sitting down again and, and doing it. Um, I have two small kids too. And you see, I'm coming up with all the excuses that I shouldn't be coming up with. But as of right now, I'm doing it as one card. Um, I think eventually, especially since my shows are kind of far out now, I'm going to hold off on sending them the gift cards because there's nothing they can do with getting pre-orders if their show is not for a few months. Get it? it? They need that reminder more so like a week before, which I do remind them a week before. I always remind them about pre-orders, but, um, you know what? I should just send out two cards. I'm here realizing while I'm talking to you guys that I should just do it in two separate occasions. So it's on my checklist as two separate things. So I should stick to this instead of having a shortcut, right? All right. So that is pretty much it. Um, once I do all the mailings and the texting, I now am friends with them on Facebook. So I am liking their pictures. I am messaging them. I even keep like a tally on this thing. Like, did I, did I make some kind of contact with them this week, whether it was liking or commenting or messaging them or something? Um, remember that in about a week or two from processing this, they're going to have, um, their, have received their jewelry from the show where I met them at. So that's another good chance to be like, Hey, how'd you like the jewelry? Start posting pictures, tell everyone that you got it from the jewelry show that you're going to have. So this is like other ways of like coming up with, you know, um, reasons to contact them and just keep yourself present in their mind. And then of course the Facebook thing, you know how I feel about it. It's like my number one tool. Um, I think that's it with hostess coaching. Let me show you where I keep all these little checklists because these checklists used to be glued onto a manila folder and I would walk around everywhere with like 30 folders at a time and all these receipts hanging out. I don't do that anymore. I keep the receipts home and then I have a three ring binder and what I do is, um, 
well, I have my, you know, premier designs, little cute thing here, my jewelry girl checklist. Um, this is pretty much something I needed at the beginning, but this is like what I should do before a show, what I need to do at a show, just reminding me little things. Um, after a show, the Monday, the Tuesday, and the, of the week after, um, when I know the jewelry is getting delivered, and then when the jewelry gets delivered. And then, of course, your golden guarantee. About 45 days later, I always want to contact everyone and say, you know, how's your jewelry doing? The 60 days is about to be up. If you need an exchange, now is the time to tell me. Okay? I also have my Facebook um, schedule. So if I have a Facebook show, you know, on Wednesday and Thursday, there's things I need to be doing for those shows. So this kind of lays that out for me and tells me what to do every day. I have some verbiage here. And then um, where what I do is I have these dividers with the January all the way to December. And I put all my January shows under the January binder and so forth. So it's um, organized. So right now I'm in March. I go to my March. I go to the shows I've already done in March. And I see if I have to, you know, double check anything. Hey, did you get your, your, your um, jewelry? I make sure the hostess has delivered all her jewelry so that I can then text people with, Hey, heard you got your jewelry. Hope you enjoy it. Remember about the golden guarantee. And then um, I can also look ahead of the stuff I have. You know, like now I'm looking at, you know, okay, I closed out this show today. I can check off all that. Then I'm looking, okay, I have this show on Saturday and this one on Sunday. Let me, today's Wednesday. I need to contact them to remind their guests that the show is this weekend. Then I was like looking ahead because sometimes you don't realize you're like at the end of one month and that next month is right there. And so you're so focused on being in March that you forget that April 1st is, is coming or April, the first week of April is coming. So I go into those shows and make sure, okay, these guys, you know, when they booked, it was a while ago, but it's, it's coming. It's approaching. Let me start reminding them. Let me start just making some contact. Um, this has worked really well for me. I also have another binder. So while I'm at it, just let me show you another tab with all my customer returns. Um, you're going to have returns. You need to keep track of them. So I have this form that I can share with you, and I just basically put you know their name and all the information I need, and I use one at a time. Okay, um, if you ever have any booking leads, I kind of have this part here of people that said, you know, yeah, I like to book, but not now. I have space to keep a list of them there. Sponsoring leads, all the people that have ever circled four or five, all the people that have um, asked me to text them the video, I keep a list of them so that, you know, until they join or tell me, no, I'm not joining, they're still a prospect in my mind. Um, then I have a list of all the people that have spent um, $100 or more. That way, um, you know, if I'm ever going to send out a mini catalog or a new catalog, I'm probably going to focus on these people. Um, or if I have sales or, or um, those really cool months of, you know, spend 75 get an item for $10, these are the people that are going to want to know about that. Then I have um, my Facebook contacts. So let me show you what I do here. I actually have a handwritten list. You see that? handwritten so I went one day and I made this form and I went through all of my Facebook friends all hundreds of them and I made different stacks so do I know you because you're, you've been a premier hostess or customer are you my friend are you my premier sister or family um, are you my teacher friend you know friends my sorority I have it all like separated into groups I have my out-of-state people on one list um, and then random people that I've added throughout, you know, being more open to just kind of friending people, meaning like I might have met them at Panera and talked to them. I'll like add them now. Okay. So I have all of that. And basically if you read GoPro, he tells you make a list, a physical list of the, all these papers of all the people make a physical list of every single person you know so what I have on my list is are they in my jewelry group and if they are I check them off are they on my jewelry page have they bought jewelry from me so my intention is that everybody at one point or another is gonna have bought jewelry have I done an OP with them and have they joined so pretty much you know everybody um, that I know is on this list as soon as I add someone on Facebook I add them to my list and I make sure they're in my group and that's the way I keep track of everybody so if I ever need you know oh my god you know what I need to go back and like 
see who I haven't talked to in a while. One second, one second. Because every day, what I'm also doing, I'm videotaping right now, give me one second. Every day, what I'm also doing is I pick five people to just randomly message and and just I don't say anything about premiere I'm just like hey how are you oh my god I saw your son broke his arm the other day is he okay you see what I'm doing so every day pick five random people that you haven't talked to in a while and just send them a message having nothing to do with premiere now if they've been watching you they may ask you so how's that jewelry business going on then you start talking about it but if they haven't no big deal. At least you've made contact. So if I ever do have to reach out to her to book a show, I won't feel so weird because I haven't talked to her in so long. No, we, we, we have been talking. So I won't, you know, feel awkward with that. That's just my personal thing. And that's what's worked for me doing this now. Um, I also have a hostess list. Every once in a while, I go into um, Hood and House, and I'll print out the fresh list of every single hostess I've had and your contact information. And if I ever want to you know, go back and book them again, I, I have it. I have a customer list, too. Now, this one I printed out a while ago, but um, this is just to help me like make sure that... Um, I don't know. It makes me feel better to have it here. I haven't really done much with it. <laughs> but um, they're there. And it, I highlight the people that I've actually friended on Facebook. Because actually, I know why I have this. These are all the people from my first 100 shows that I never kept in touch with and was trying to kind of like salvage that. But, you know, sometimes I feel like it's too late because it's been two years. But, you know, it's never too late. So maybe they've been waiting for me to contact them. Then I have a downline section, and this is where I have you guys all your names. And actually, I have to update this. I have my new daughters I have to update. And um, then I have a section for my goals, and this is obviously where I have the get in the game. Give me a second. The get in the game goals, and um, what's that? That's some other stuff. Okay. And as you see, this is my, here's some inspiration, things to implement. A lot of times I had so many ideas and I just wasn't um, doing them because they were just scattered everywhere in my life. So now if I have an idea, I write it down, I file it under this folder and when I'm in the mood to, you know, implement an idea, I can come here and they're all here. Before they were like in my head and just nothing was getting done. So, um... My binder has been very good. And I was a teacher, and if you're a teacher, you know, you know, binders and checklists and files and your organization system in the classroom is super important. So um, it's the same with your business. So that is it. I am done. How long is this video? 22 minutes. But um, if you were wondering about the whole hostess coaching process and at least what I do and how I organize myself, now you know. Tell me what you think in the comments and tell me what you do because I am always up for some ideas. Okay? Have a great day, wonderful ladies. Bye.